language culture and food in cities are constantly being challenged these days in india and across the world fights are breaking out over what the city has become and everybody is trying to define what the city is today and where it is going is this really in our control what are cities really in a classic definition cities are dense urban settlements characterized by trade and commerce it is distinct from villages which are adjoining agricultural areas cities are labor markets which grows by a process called urbanization which is people moving into the cities by a process of migration to gain access to work and money contemporary cities which you see around you today have less manufacturing which has moved to the outskirts and other things and more density they are called cosmopolitan because they bring together people from different parts of the country and the world with their own language culture and their own biases as well where they have grown up and what they have faced is what they carry with them when they come into a new city and this function of people coming together and doing certain things leads to what is called growth of the city we will try and see how to understand a city in its entirety we'll talk to someone who has been studying cities and has written a book about one such city which is bengaluru let's hear from her what the book is about and what her own move taught her about the city this can easily apply to any other city in the country just a disclaimer before we proceed all views of the people in this podcast including mine and the guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect those of the organization they are affiliated with <laughs> So Malani Goel has been a deep dive business journalist for over 25 years a seasoned writer she has worked with india's leading publication including economic times india today forbes and the times of india she has tracked and reported on india's tech and startup landscape for over a decade now based in delhi since 1989 she moved to bengaluru in 2021 specifically to work on this book and the book is called unboxing bengaluru right currently she is the co-founder of the unboxing blr foundation a non for not for profit platform focused on documenting bengaluru's rise as a global tech hub and the platform she is working on has multiple initiatives she's working on a bunch of things that we'll go through with there are two parts of this that we will cover one is about the book itself why she wrote it what she uh, what she uh, saw in the process of writing the book and her personal journey of moving uh, to bengaluru and what it entailed and uh, things like that so malini so let's just di- dive into the book itself why did you want to write this book you know how did this come about it's a long story um, satya uh, and there are two very different reasons divergent reasons why sort of i got into doing the book one is the journalist reason right mm. um i'm giving you a long winded answer to sure. this okay and, we like to uh, hear that yes and uh, in around 2007 8 you know i had done a three four part series on hyderabad okay this was the time that uh, hyderabad was changing rapidly and i loved diving into that hyderabad is, is it was an alien city to me loved diving into it looking at different aspects of it that stoked my interest um sometime in 2010 right i did a country special report on south africa again a completely alien country and i began to look at it uh, it was a 30 page special report for forbes i loved the challenge okay the challenge was to get into a new country understand it and then write about it so it's a challenge that i totally relish this happened sometime in 2015 or 17 i forget now i was traveling to israel it was a trip on invitation of israeli government and immersion into the startup ecosystem there you know what some where during those conversations and i was sitting with the mayor of tel aviv talking about tel aviv positioning all that and i had just finished reading the book the startup nation what occurred to me is a small country like israel what they've managed to do with technology as a startup nation one is the journey itself you know what they have accomplished but second is the storytelling of the country and all of it put together the government the startup ecosystem uh, the journalists there i found that compelling and challenging 
So all that came together. And when I returned, uh, it was uh, just a passion project for me. So I had done deep dive journalism for a long time. And uh, this was uh, something I wanted to put together. So as a passion project, I decided I'd look at the world's top five startup ecosystems and what makes them tick. And I thought I'd look at five global cities, the tech hubs, from Silicon Valley to Tel Aviv to Bangalore, Bengaluru, and uh, dive into it for a very practical and cost efficiency reason, because I was coming to Bangalore, right? Uh, as a reporter, as a journalist. And I put together a plan for Bangalore. A friend of mine, um, in the publishing world, he suggested this is a fantastic book project. This was sometime around 2019. And I said, okay, well, I, I'll work on a book then. And I began to work on a book. And somewhere along the way, I got introduced to Prashant Prakash, my co-author of the book. And he said, if you are working on a book on Bengaluru, I would love to collaborate. So that's how the two of us got together. A small seed, a small wish, a small dream. And you know, what it has come to. I myself am amazed sometime, right? Uh, so the book got out in November. It's a contemporary biography of Bengaluru that takes a sh focused look at the past 40 years, past four decades. While we do take a historical look at a, a very sweeping look at the history of Bengaluru, last four decades remains the focus. Today, where we are, what I'm working on, um, it's a full-fledged, uh, massive project. So think of Unboxing BLR Foundation as a city-focused platform with two, three main intent. One is to document the city's journey. Second is to help people experience the city better. And the third is to help people engage with the city, right? All fast-growing cities have a very vast population of migrant people who have a very transient and sometimes transactional relationship with the city, right? So the intent came from all that. So besides the book, we are also working on a documentary series for one of the OTGs. Uh, we'll begin work on it this year. There is a plan to build a museum, India's first startup tech innovation museum in Bengaluru in a public-private partnership. Um, we are also putting together a data report, an annual data report on Bangalore. And last year, for the first time, we launched a city festival, multicultural annual city festival in December. Uh, it was a soft launch, and we do intend to make it an annual affair. And uh, we, like everything in Bangalore, we want to sort of aim big. So in the next three to five years, we want this to be the largest uh, city festival, cultural festival uh, in Asia. And fingers crossed, we'll make that happen. No, that's useful. Let's, uh, there are a lot of things you're doing and it's interesting to deep dive into some of these. But you brought up an interesting question. We'll get into the cities and things like that. But you talked about the, the cities as being some kind of a melting pot of people coming from everywhere, being transient and things like that. What have you learned from all of this stuff that you have covered? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? It seems to bring about a lot of conflicting emotions, this whole thing about other people in my place. The cities have benefited from that in some way. But have you observed anything in your conversations with people, how they react to these things? What is the general nature of this? So one is more a macro 20,000 feet level, um, uh, Satya, that I would want to sort of uh, look at this question at that level. So all global cities from London to New York and even Delhi and Mumbai, right? Either you can say they are nobody's cities or everybody's city, right? Very nice. Uh, and... And all global cities have to reach that stage. If you look at the people who reside in London, I forget this exact statistics. Either it's two in five or something to that effect are born outside of, forget Britain, outside of the country. Um, they are non-native, right? Non-citizens. That's a powerful thing. I think uh, global cities are about that. And cities have a journey. You are a small town, you are a small city, then you slowly become bigger and bigger. And there is a transition phase. And I come from Delhi, right? Yeah, Delhi let's talk about that. Yeah, let's talk Delhi, about that. Delhi absorbs everybody. You mm. know? I mean, either nobody is a Delhiite or everybody is a Delhiite, right? Uh, 
So there isn't a native, native Delhiite that you can talk about. And uh, I've lived in Delhi for 35 years and Mm -hmm. I'm as much of Delhi as any other city, right? And uh, Delhi took years to reach there. But you know what? Before Bangalore, everything has been crunched into a very, very short period of time. This was a very small town, very small city, a pensioner's paradise. It was not too long back, 1980s, Mm. right? Mm, That was the narrative. Today, this is the most, if I can say so, global city in India, at least in its construct, in the kind of businesses it is sort of building, right? The kind of people who come to the city, it's an extremely global city. In two to three decades, that has happened. I think we'll have to give this city some time. But I can tell you that when I came here, I just settled down so easily. Why is that? Okay, multiple factors. Biggest factor is, I think, the work. I was, I'm was i doing such a wonderful project that takes all the credit, that gets a lot of credit for it, right? Also, when I came here, I think the city is very cosmopolitan, very mm. cosmopolitan. What does that mean? Uh, uh, so I can give you one example. So I have encountered four or five help so far, house help, right? One is from Nepal. One is from Bengal. One is from Orissa, another is from somewhere in Karnataka, and the other one that that I encountered was from Tamil Nadu. Now tell me, isn't that cosmopolitan? Where all I haven't encountered this in Delhi. I can tell you that much. Mm-hmm. And Delhi is has a North Indian skew, right? Mm-hmm. Most mm-hmm. of these people would have come from either Bihar or UP or Bengal. And here that is what I've encountered from Assam, from Nepal, from Bengal, Odisha, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, Kerala. I think I really find this cosmopolitan to the many power as far as Delhi, if if I compare it to that. And because of that, I think language, it's Mm. such an obvious thing, right? Uh, You think uh, somebody will know Kannada, somebody will know Tamil, somebody will know Malayalam, and you can get by with is speaking a little bit of Hindi, a little bit of English. Uh, so, you know, all these languages, 108 languages, this is a polyglot city, right? Mm. 108 languages. So cosmopolitan, when I say I do mean all these things. The other factor that I really experienced very powerfully and very significantly is as a woman, right? Mm. Uh, I come from Delhi uh, and the overhang of me being a woman and how I navigate the city has an important correlation, the safety, the security factor, mm. right? Mm. A bit of it is perception, a bit of it is reality, but I think though both feed into how I behave in the city, right? Like in Delhi, I don't remember if I would step out late in the evening after dark, mm. I would want to walk. Mm. If I had to walk, I would be extremely conscious of it right Uh, I definitely wouldn't want to walk on dark streets alone I would drive in the car Mm. if even if it was short distance at night so I remember first time when I came I think it was uh, first few months in Bangalore right Mm. Mm. um, I think October November December somewhere that time 2020 Uh, 21 21 21 21. I had come and I was very new to the city very Mm. new Mm. And I was meeting uh, somebody, it was around 15 minutes of walk from where I stayed. So on my way there, I got a cab, Uber. But on my way back, you know, I wasn't getting. So it was just 10, 15 minutes walk. It weighed so much on my mind, I can't tell you. It was the deserted street. I was so conscious about if I'm safe, if I'm careful, if I'm this. So many questions, right? And I walked with a lot of stress that day for that 15 minutes walk, there was an overhang of Delhi on me, right? Mm. I'd come from Delhi and Delhi shaped me for 35 years. You can't completely get rid. And one, that. And second, I didn't know this city, right? Correct. So you bring in certain mental construct of another city to this, right? Today, I walk easily. I walk at night. Mm. I walk alone. I don't have to take my car if I don't need to. Uh, I Weather, of course, is a big factor that, you know, <laughs> weather is the hygiene, right? 
But for a woman, that feeling of safety liberates her in public spaces in a way that typically many men may not even imagine, right? Mm. I definitely experienced that. It's uh, worth preserving. And I heard that story multiple times from multiple women. Mm -hmm. um, so I definitely sort of resonate totally with that. Linguistic sentiments are becoming important and prominent. Uh, how do we handle that? I think as a city is what will determine how we take this forward, right? Yeah. Uh, but what is true is that this is a city that speaks 108 languages, right? Amazing. So one, uh, that that will be part of the fabric of Bangalore, right? Mm. But I think a bit of what I know a lot of Bangaloreans feel is that they are being sort of people from outside come and do, they do not embrace the city, its cultural ethos and underpinnings. I think a bit of that may have certain realistic sort of explanations as well, right? I think many of us, when we come to the city, we don't embrace it as easily and as deeply as many times we might need to. Because mm -hmm. see, this is a floating population. They come in and they go, right? And they, it's a transactional connect with the city. Now, how can we belong to the city as much as city belongs to us? Correct. Right? I think as a resident of the city, we might want to sort of pay some attention to that as well. So one of the things that we felt, you know, because of the startup and tech world, right, which is mm -hmm. changing very fast, it's young people, they do not have the time, and hence their connect with the city is a lot shallow, right? Mm. Now, especially thinking about some of these, many of our initiatives are intended to help people engage with the city. How is to that? help people understand. The fact that the book, right? Look mm. at the book. It's not an academic book. It's not a coffee table book. It's a deeply researched book, but written in a very accessible manner, right? Let's start with that. Uh, where you can get a good sense of contemporary sense of what the city is. It speaks to you a lot more easily, right? But not just this book, right? Uh, we understood that in today's digital era, we need to have a video format, right? Mm. That was the reason why we decided to do a documentary series on the city to help people understand what this city is all about. I think everything em emanates, emerges out of understanding, right? What this city is, what it has to offer, its journey, its challenges, right? So that we are able to relate to the city, connect with the city better. So that is one intent. The second bit that we are also doing, for example, as you know, um, December festival. Mm. The intent of the festival is to bring everybody together. You may be Kannadiga, you may be not. You may be musician, you may be not. You may be have interest in plays and theater, you may not have. Here is an occasion to come experience the city in all its fullness and richness, right? And this is an occasion for all of us to come together and explore that in a way that also you connect with the city, connect with the kind of people that you may not otherwise connect with, the kind of entertainment you may not expose yourself to. What was the most beautiful part about the Haba? Mm. Uh, we call it Unboxing BLR Haba, UBH. Mm. You know, we did... Uh, uh, music in the park okay satya and um, in couple of parks um, seven eight parks i remember, forget the exact number we mm. held uh, music performances uh, in the evening uh, 5 to 8 6 to 8 30 that kind of period we worked with the bbmp and everything to make it happen we got we curated a set of performers if you ask me that was for me the highlight of hubba when you went to the park you saw old people, young people, and young people means bachas as well, right? And also, you could make out people from different income class who will never go to music performances, right? All of them coming together in the beautiful Bangalore, Bengaluru weather, enjoying music and enjoying all kinds of music. We had different kinds of music playing 
um, being performed at different on different days that is what celebration is that is what bringing people fr- from all across sections of the society all kinds of people together in that public space that is what i meant when i said you know breaking barriers breaking silos otherwise tech people will not talk to non tech people old people will not connect with young people and this is how we bring people together and help them explore the city better the city itself is multi dimensional right i would absolutely, like to say absolutely absolutely yeah? yeah and in, in, in this is, is is there an identity you saw because you're trying to call this the city of new beginnings because of how you came about a lot of people come here do new things and get their life started and achieve certain amount of things it has shaped over many years you called it a pensioners paradise right at one point in time and then it became garden city and then it is now called the it city innovation capital and many other things these monikers come and go and they relate to the the most visible part of what people see this as being and there's an identity that is crafted by that but you are trying to bring together unknown things which are not necessarily and this is one of the questions i have been asking is there an identity you saw for bangalore apart from its cosmopolitanism or is the cosmopolitanism itself an identity for bengaluru what is it that people should know it as and does it have any relation to its situational location in the state of karnataka or is it independently famous for something else which is different i'm trying so, to answer all these questions maybe you can also throw some light on it so i tell you that two three things to me that stands out about bangalore which is compelling okay hmm. i think if you look at the city uh, right after independence this was a cantonment city right yep and then it became a psu city hmm uh, and it was of course this science city because yeah. of iisc hal isro all that happened in the 80s it became the it outsourcing y2k boom right mm. and it became the back office of the world at that point of time globally people would look at labor cost arbitrage india cheap labor cyber coolies things like that you know bangalore started it but look at where bangalore is today it's a mm. deep tech is innovation a range of things from aadhar to upi to fintech to space tech to all that cutting edge right if one thing that is common is this city has managed to reinvent itself and stay relevant mm. in the times that it is in look at it right so right after independence what india needed right the city positioned or got positioned like that some was happenstance some was reg- government intervention whatever but look back and you'll realize this city the, its capacity to reinvent and remain relevant is something that totally stands out to me that stands out big and i think if and that's the reason why we call it the city of new beginnings many things that bangalore started has ended psu era the era when PSUs dominated our Indian economy. It's over, long over. But the city, which was a PSU city, is no longer the PSU, just a PSU city. It is much, much more than that. So that's one part. The capacity to reinvent, stay relevant. I think that is something so powerful, so special. Bangalore should absolutely conserve, preserve, nurture that to the best that it could. right the second thing which is uh, more cultural right this is a city that embraces newer things newer people a lot more easily than anywhere else new trends even like you know uh, so many people who have come here and settled down and they have born and brought up in delhi but they say no this is what feels like more home to us than any other city so this city embraces newer people newer trends a new ideas not more easily than other city a whole lot of city the third that i think is the city's pay it forward culture and it it showed up so many times as i was working on the book people just stepped up and stepped out to help me and that version of story i've heard from so many entrepreneurs that so many people when these people were in crisis they just held out offered support with no skin in the game no reason no vested interest 
no sort of transactional approach to it. They just came up, out, they helped, and they made this person sort of reach wherever they needed to. I don't think many cities have that. I think it is a powerful strand in Bengaluru's software that it must absolutely preserve nurture. And the last bit I'll tell you who somebody else said, and I'm just kind of latching on to it, the intellectual orgasm in the city, right? The kind of people you encounter, the kind of conversations you are able to have, both the frequency and the quality, that is very, very powerful. I think those are some of the things, if you ask me, stand out about this city as I reflect back. The people who come in bring their own ideas. Like you said, you lived in Delhi for a long time. You will have a hangover of that. Some other people come from other cities which are more, uh, it, they are differently built. They are different in culture and the way people think they are as as a uh, as a group they do bring it into the city as well based on what you said telling me they do try and belong to the kind of thinking that is there in the city and probably it rubs off and it changes them Gita. in different ways if there is a brand of bengaluru that articulates this nicely and showcases it to people and says when you come in here this is how I, I give a standard example. I've worked in the mobility space and people come from car dominated cities and try to say this place doesn't have the same kind of wide roads that is there over there. You wouldn't say that if you went to London, you take the bus, you'll just go to Singapore. So if it creates a unique vision and an identity for itself and the way people move and think and talk and consume things, how do you articulate that? Because I think we may be failing to articulate that in a nice way. It's just the rant I've been saying in many of my conversations with people is that maybe we are not trying to tell people that, yes, you have known things for a long time in where you have been. But when you come in here, there is a certain way in which you can take benefits of being here. Maybe you can you know, do things differently. The way Bengaluru thinks is slightly more capitalist in nature than some other, right? So there is a lot of business influence in the way decisions are being made it might not be the same in a delhi which is to me when i go there it seems more like a enclave for politicians and the way people talk also there's a lot of political name dropping there and here there's a lot of innovators name dropping happening israel south africa many other places you've been to how do you feel that Bengaluru can articulate these things a little better. Is your hapa going to do that? Is the museum going to do that? Or is it collectively going to do anything in that space? Or these are just things that tell you what it is, but doesn't necessarily need to define anything explicitly that this is Bengaluru. Because so, I have the whole brand Bengaluru thing that is trying to tell some story. Then there is unboxing Bengaluru and all the activities trying to tell some stories. Are they all disparate pieces of activities or is there a story that brings this together and projects an identity for Bengaluru? And is that a sustainable identity? Is that an inclusive identity? What are the different layers in this? We are taking a very long-term view and very deep view of brand Bengaluru. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think any understanding and any crafting of brand, right? Mm -hmm. Should one emanate out of the depth of an informed understanding of the brand itself, right? What is Bengaluru? First, and the book was an attempt to help people understand what it. For example, many times people asked, why is Bengaluru India's tech capital? You know, mm. road sucks, potholes are terrible, garbage everywhere. Uh, you know, there's just so many problems in the city. Then what is so special about the city, right? Yet, year after year after year, and not one year, I mean, I remember 2007-8, that era when Hyderabad was the, you know, rising. Uh, it has great infrastructure, right? And yet, this city continues to be India's startup tech capital. There has to be something different, right? So one is to build the narrative for the city. Mm. And that narrative grounded in depth in terms of informed understanding of it. So that is one thing that we are doing. See, we definitely think a whole lot of effort that we are making will definitely help people understand the city at a more depth level. The one thing that I guess not just about cities, but anybody and everybody in a digital era, social media platform era, nuance is gone, right? You are either a good person or a bad person. 
<laughs> things are black and white. Bangalore is either a city of traffic jams, potholes, and uh, uh, narrow roads, or this is a city which is a beautiful city, great weather, great flowers, great color. So you know, it is either a great city or it's a terrible city, right? But I think all cities have their challenges. You know, look at Delhi. In December, there is smog. That's the uh, sort of crime capital of India. There are many challenges for Bangalore, for for Delhi. And did too for uh, for Bombay, Mumbai, right? I'm saying all cities, irrespective of who you look at, London, New York, wherever, Sao Paulo. I was in Sao Paulo in um, October last year, right? The downtown, the central business district of Sao Paulo. What what was the word they used? Uh, it was coke uh, addiction had surged to such a level that almost all top businesses have just moved and there were many other issues right but it had a decaying of the central business district now sao paulo is grappling with a very different set of issues so the point i'm trying to make is all cities have problems and all cities have their strengths right as far as bengaluru is concerned it has its challenges i'm not one is not saying that it's all great and we should be cognizant of the challenges but there are many things very beautiful about this city when you are building the brand of the city we must celebrate the strength that the city has and of course try work on the weaknesses of the city to make things better so there is no doubt that this city's infrastructure needs to beef up this city has grown so dramatically the infrastructure hasn't kept pace right and there is so there is the hardware the hard infrastructure that the city has to keep pace but city's software which is beautiful which is well oiled we have to make sure at least that doesn't that we are able to preserve conserve and we are at unboxing the lr foundation right we are focusing on that part the software part the cultural fabric all global cities should offer you a better quality of life and yes better quality of life is about traffic congestion commute all that but it is also about a weekend life it is also about the cultural fabric of the city it is also about a vibrant public spaces and we'll try and work on some of that as well excellent it's about how people feel like they belong in spite of being transient and how they interact with it somebody told me there was this joint secretary who was from the ministry who was in bangalore and i was sitting with him and he just asked a question to all the bureaucrats sitting around him from the city uh, a few of them and he was asking what what makes bengaluru bengaluru right it was just this was just i think last year and people said the weather they said this and that and, and then he came back and said i think it's the people Absolutely. and i just agreed with him and i just said that you hit the nail on the head right i was hoping somebody would say that but he said it himself i think it's the people at the end of the day the people make the city and how Absolutely. yeah so and 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 what they do in the city make the city at the end of the day and how that identity is craft crafted and how it is projected based goes changes over time and how it is like you said the psu then the it boom then the innovation and we don't know what is next you know the, one of the things and i have been a business journalist for uh, 25 years so mm. um i have interviewed range of ceos entrepreneurs founders cxos and across the country right and not just across the country many international as well one of the things that stood out for me is uh, the groundedness of the people especially people who are rich who are successful who are powerful who are influential you know that to me stands out about this city uh, that they are accessible they don't wear their wealth on their shoulders right uh, on their collars right that much it stands out people who are bangaloreans tell me that's changing hope that doesn't it's a city which is an inclusive city right mm. uh, you can i still know that you know there are people who you call they pick up their calls right uh, or you email them they'll reply on their own and these are very powerful successful people it doesn't happen normally in many other cities so i love this part about an inclusive city a city where the rich don't behave 
like you know uh, in their sitting in their ivory towers they're accessible people you can look at them and you sometimes you don't even know that the person is belongs to another sort of layer of the society right so all those are important good things i like groundedness in the city no matter which part of the society social strata you come from income class you come from that's that's very very powerful so as i was working on the book i realized uh, that uh, you know i was operating in almost literal data vacuum right mm. uh, because the census uh, report was 2011 and uh, even something as basic as population of the city uh, is so dated right yeah in any other city it wouldn't have made that big a difference mm. but when between 2011 and 2021 no other city has grown so dramatically <laughs> than bangalore right mm. so i am not only looking at old data but terribly old data right mm. which may be completely irrelevant in today's world absolutely so what we are working on is an annual data report on bangalore Mm-hmm. um and uh, uh, what we are trying to do is uh, gather data from multiple sources which is government data regulatory data um uh, satellite data digital platform data and try and bring all that together and we will try and look at bangalore through three four lenses bangalore today versus bangalore past bangalore versus other indian cities like delhi mumbai chennai hyderabad kolkata and bangalore versus other global cities like tel aviv silicon valley london new york we'll try and stack it up and we'll try and sort of help you get a better sense of who is bangalore what is bangalore how is bangalore changing how does bangalore stack up all this is to help a more informed and fact based sort of understanding of the city uh, so that's something i'm kind of quite passionate about i just hope it sort of works out the way one is envisaging but we look forward to that you know it will i guess uh, good luck to that and many other initiatives and uh, uh, thanks for sharing your story with us and here's a call out to the people to go get the book unboxing bengaluru mm-hmm. available i'll put the sh- link in the show notes so you guys can go get it and uh, thanks malani for coming thanks. on and thanks, uh, sharing all these interesting stories with us let's hope we get to see how bengaluru shapes up and how what it is is something we are continuing to watch out and see how we define it how do we grapple with the concept of bengaluru and what it, who are the occupants of bengaluru the true occupants the historical occupants and the new ones you know satya all global cities look at london Mm-hmm. London had to reinvent itself in, itself in the last 4 5 years post brexit many people thought london is mm-hmm. go- gone right london managed to not just reinvent and bounce back very well new york has gone through that challenge in the recent past so you know what they say in the tech world only paranoid survive you know something relevant to the city as well that cities that manage to reinvent themselves and stay relevant is what and i just hope bengaluru manages to do that